Good evening everyone, this is Chaitali Bag from the European Bureau of Aviation and Defence Universe based out of Cyprus. This evening we have with us two very popular veterans from the Indian Army Corps of Artillery to commemorate with us the 194th Gunners Day. We welcome Lieutenant General B.S. Pawar and Major General Dr. P.K. Chakravarti who are not only the authority when it comes to Indian Artillery Corps but also two former gunners who are guiding lights to the nation on the need of having an artillery which is second to none. Respected sirs, ADU is privileged to have you on its show. Now I hand over to our editor Sangeeta Saxena to steer the discussion ahead. Uh, good evening sir, good evening Bali sir and good evening good Chakravarti evening. sir. Good evening. Sir, uh, you know, it's a real privilege for us, sir, to have both of you here. And uh, I think, you know, uh, you both of you need no introduction for our viewers. Sir, both of you are the beacons when it comes to artillery and pepping it up for the government to see what they can do. As far as we have seen, you know, it's been more than two decades since we've been seeing you. And today evening is totally dedicated to the core because we have, you know, the raising day of the core coming very near the Gunners Day. Every year we celebrate it on the 28th of September. And this time too, we are here to celebrate the Gunners Day with the two of our major veterans. I don't think there's a third name. At times I feel, you know, when I talk to people, there's never a third name which comes for, you know, comes ahead. So, sir, we'll go ahead with this. Two generals on the show. And so we start with the senior. Uh, General B.S. Pawar, our very, very own Bali, sir. You know, the whole army knows him as Bali, sir. So <laughs> there's something, you know, which uh, I always feel I wanted to ask you. And that was that, uh, you know, I think the only successful story of Make in India at the moment for the Indian Army is the Indian artillery. And do you think it's really taking us towards the modernization drive? Are we going ahead with it? Or, you know, do we still need the backlog to be filled? So what do you feel about it, sir? Sangeeta, let me first start with what you said. The only success story that was taking place in the Indian yes. modernization scheme, and that was the judgment of artillery modernization. It was on track. Till last year, I said everything is on track, it's moving ahead. There are some glitches now which need to be addressed. Uh, first of all, let me, you know, touch the positive aspects. Look at the M777 ULH, 60 pieces already inducted and has been one of our biggest assets on the Eastern Ladakh border with China. I mean, this is a gun which can be moved from one valley to another with the help of the Chinook helicopter. Very, very versatile. The second one, uh, the very positive thing that has happened is, and a success story that the 100th Vajra, K9 Vajra tracked SP gun was delivered yes, to the Indian Army in February yes. this year. What a success. But in Absolutely. both cases, we had the private industry also involved. Why I'm saying that we are a little bit dithered. Yes, you have come up with Dhanush, the upgradation of Bofors, upgraded Bofors. We have got the ATAGS, Advanced Toad Artillery Gun System, which is which should be the mainstay of Indian artillery in the subsequent years. We also reached the finalization of this great toad artillery trials after five years. In 2019, the Israeli ethos came out as the clear winner, being L1. But two years since, no decision by the government, still dithering on it. We have got gaps today on our borders, especially on the northern borders where medium artillery is, is, is in short supply. And this is a gun we need to get into service. However, I am totally in line that attacks will be there. It'll take another three to four years. It has problems. Remember, both in Danush and attacks, we have, we have had barrel bursts. Danush had a barrel burst in February this year. Attacks had a barrel burst in September last year. These are issues which, uh, you know, you can't make a gun overnight. It takes time. It takes a lot of evaluation. It takes a lot of exploitation of the gun. Only then you can 
So while we are moving ahead in some areas, we need to address, we are also moving in the indigenization uh, route, but we certainly need to address the shortcomings that the attacks and Dhanush have. And in the meantime, the government must adhere to the red flag raised by the army that 400 pieces of ethos must be inducted, the balance 1180, because after all, this is the biggest uh, and most critical project, 1580 guns to replace the field artillery guns. And the rest 1180 plus more subsequently should be the attacks along with the Dhanush, but they both need to overcome the glitches which are today being pointed out by the Indian army. I mean, uh, I'll leave yes. it at that. I'll cover later on more. Right. Absolutely. Chakravarti, sir, we'll take up from where Bali, sir, left. And that is that, you know, we are talking of making India the best story is the RT story. But then how much indigenization is there? You know, when we talk of it, we say, OK, now India is making it so 100 percent indigenization. We've got two big Indian companies into it in addition to the government sector. And uh, how much is it there? Are we still importing parts? Do we still have only a very less percentage? We'd like to know from you the exact situation. Sir. Yeah, well, uh, to answer very simplistically, Firstly, when we talk of indigenization, the first person who raised it was President Abdul Kalam. And he carried out a detailed research. And you know, see, he was dealing both with DRU and others. It was 30% of what you call was Indian and 70% was coming from abroad. Well, today, I haven't heard figures. I keep hearing that, I mean, Sesa mentioned about uh, the canine Vajra where they're saying 85% of the components are made in locally. Now, when they're made locally, it doesn't mean whether the components, components are coming this thing. But when it comes to the fi financial issues, it still comes out to about something like, I think it would be fair to say that financially, if we would be having about 40% indigenous and 60% from abroad or 50-50, then it will be a great thing for any country. As I was bringing out, Possibly, we can take the best example of is of the iPad, the iPhone, or take the Boeing aircraft. Most of the components, I mean, say, are made abroad, but the design, the integration, and all the other issues are done in the United States. The United States, if it today carries out manufacture of these components, it won't be able to manage a price which would be sustainable. So there's no country in the world which produces indigenous. Yes, countries like Russia and the United States follow a beautiful rule that their armed forces will only have equipment which is made in their country. So keeping that in mind, when you look at the artillery, I think we got a fantastic uh, uh, record. Let's start with Brahmos. I would say Brahmos, all said and done, is the collaboration between Russia and India. And the, this is a supersonic cruise missile, which possibly will become a hypersonic cruise missile. Let's take today, we are having the 130 mm being upgraded. It's a great indigenous issue. It sir spoke of 60, what you call ultralight houses. When you talk of the 60 ultralight houses, possibly about 18 to 20 have come, have come from abroad. And the rest are being made by Mahindras. The K9 Vajra, 100 out of 100, have practically been made here. So when you look at indigenous content, and not only that, the K9 Vajra, in all probability, would be exported. So there is no reason whatsoever for us to feel that, as far as the indigenization is concerned, with relation to India, is relative to all other indigenizations being carried across the world. Now, the beauty of indigenization, which I will not keep it to the artillery, but I'll say is that today we have got an automotive industry. Now, you will say we don't manufacture an engine in this automotive industry, or we have got an aviation industry. The point is, if you go to manufacture an engine, now this is the issue which comes in which General Bali Power rightly said that we need to get some ethos guns in. 
if you're going to manufacture the engine, the cost would go up exponentially. It's not that we are not capable of manufacturing all the other components indigenously. Moment you get into this indigenous business, whether it's a submarine, whether it's a gun, or whether it's any other piece, your costs go up, your time goes up. So the cost factor goes up. Once that goes up, the whole issue takes a different issue. Well, as far as the artillery modernization is concerned, I think the engineerization is at par with anything that is comparable in the world. I leave it at that, and then we'll allow you for the other questions. Uh, Bali, sir, we'll take off from here. And uh, just to understand, do we need to, uh, you know, fill in the backlog by importing guns? We have the success story of Bofors, which was an imported gun. We also have M777 at the moment. Now, the backlog, I feel, uh, which I feel is still not complete, but you are their expert. And we'd like to understand that, will the Indian production, Indian manufacturing, fill in the backlog or we, do, we still need to import? And if we need to import, in addition to uh, the M777, which other guns do you think are compatible to the Indian uh, Army artillery? See, Sangeeta, what I first of all want to just uh, uh, add to what Chakravarti has said. You know, he said the costs will go up. Do you know the attacks today, the costs being quoted, are double the cost of what uh, Athos and uh, the Trajan guns, which, we, which went through the trials, double the cost. And that is what will happen. That is what will happen because indigenous production is not uh, all that simple. Uh, there are parts which have to be got from here and there. Having said that, you know, how do you fill the gaps? One, the army has been very clearly told the MOD. You know, the negative list gets implemented in December 2021 yeah. for the RT guns. After that, you can't get any RT guns from outside. So the time period is just two to three months. And you have to sign the contract with these 400 guns if you want to fill the gap for medium guns. There are no medium guns. How can you keep flogging the Bofors? For how long will you flog? They did a terrific job for you in uh, Cargill War. Yes. yes. Ever since they are the ones which are there, we are uh, you know flaunting everywhere. But the pieces, number of pieces left are not even 200 or maybe even less. These 400 have to come to fill in the gap first of all. My second thing is Dhanush, very good OFB indigenization. OAB is doing it. There are glitches in it, major glitches. You can't keep having barrel bursts. This is a third or fourth barrel burst in February this year. It not only reliability of a gun gets questioned, the safety of the crew which is manning it. If you keep having these, I think the way forward is for Dhanush to get the private sector also involved. Today we have four companies: Bharat Forge, LNT, Mahindras. You got Tata's. All these chaps are absolutely now into the manufacturing of artillery guns. And I think the, the, the OAP needs to get hold of these people and get over these glitches only then. Because let me tell you, while the uh, he brought out the upgradation of the 130mm Russian gun, yes, that is indigenous. It is proceeding well, but that's only an upgraded gun. The Athos is still about three to four years away. Uh, sorry, the attacks. Your own DRDO yeah, yeah, with yeah. two yes. private uh, sector people, that is the Tatas and the uh, Bharat Fort. Yes. They're still three to four years away. They'll have to go through trials, evaluations. So this gap of, you know, I'm just, this is just a drop in the ocean, getting these 400. There is a lot more. We have to get almost 3,000 pieces of artillery. Your present IFG 105 has stood us in very good time, but its range is 17 kilometers. All the modern systems, guns of today have 40 kilometer plus ranges. So we cannot, I mean, you expect to fight a battle or a war with the IFGs, which has got just 17 kilometers of range. So I, I think the immediate requirement is 400 Athos must be got. And thereafter, we must speed up the indigenous uh, process. It must be monitored from time to time. Quality assurance must be ensured. And only that is the way forward. Otherwise, there's no other way. We, uh, and our, sir, our, you, 
yes and so you were also the commandant of the uh, training division the school of Art artillery and do you feel that our training systems are perfect with this changing scenario in the indian artillery with new guns coming up and everything do we need to improve do we need to do something on it no i i, I think our school of art is one of the institutions premier institutions which has always kept up with times and chakravarti will will you know second me on that any changes that take place whether you get new equipment in whether you get new surveillance equipment in even when the uavs came in we upgrade we upgrade the training and i think one of the best training institutions if someone has to learn a lesson is to go to the school of art so there is no uh, that upgradation is taking place along with induction of the new equipment and i have no doubt in that right right so chakravarti sir from here we'd like to just ask you you know about what is the status on the front of the rockets what is the how what is the current status quo do we have sufficiency do we have uh, you know production capability or if we need to import are we importing sufficient enough you know so just a complete package on the rockets you're talking about the rockets or the missiles which one would you like me to really start? uh i we'll first talk about the rockets and then we'll talk about missiles okay. later on well as far as the rockets are concerned i think the numbers needed are much more well let's let's talk firstly what we have we have the smurch which is from russia we have the bm21 uh, which is uh, been upgraded in terms of what you call finding see the the tubes are very good but uh, the launchers well the urals had lived their life and yes. balis was very closely associated with them I also was very lucky because I had them in my brigade, and I know how much of problems. The lovely equipment, but uh, the vehicles now will be having the what you call Ashok Leyland with the LNT coming in. So therefore, these will be replaced, and they'll be in excellent condition. We have the extended range ammunition which we have got from Russia. That is, the range has gone up from 20 kilometers to 40 kilometers. As far as the smudge is concerned, we have a lighter version of the smudge which I have seen in Russia myself. Uh, our entire fighting has to be in the mountains as we look at it today. I'm talking about a perspective of, shall we say, 10 years, which just recently discussed and written about. So therefore, we need to possibly get a lighter smudge, which is available, and you know, which can have a lesser turning radius so that we can reach the mountains. The BM-21 can go to the mountains and it can be deployed, particularly Eastern Ladakh, where you know you have long stretches and you do not have really the crest coming in that prominently. You can use these guns. We have been having 130 firing in the glaciers. So there's no problem of, you know, low angle firing equipment going over there. Now come on to the main issue, the Pinaka. Uh, see, Pinaka, the present version, well, gives you close to about, shall we put it, about 37 kilometers. So we'll take it to 40 kilometers of range. It's an excellent system. We have worked very, very hard with it. And the whole issue was the ammunition. And I must say the ARD has now successfully even made an extended range ammunition of 60 kilometers. We possibly felt, as Balisa said, that the medium regiments were short. We didn't know when the guns would be coming. I do not know. We got the guns approved. We got everything approved. But the guns actually on ground, as we said, only 60 pieces is all that we can record of the ultralight howitzer. Otherwise, the buffers continues as the mainstay. So we said at least we get the pinaka, the rockets. In. When we get the rockets in, the if we can, the 60 kilometers trials were carried out recently. But see, these are trials which are done by the developing agencies. There is a big difference between the trials being conducted by the developing agency and one being conducted by the user. When it comes to General Bali Power, from where the, you know, normally we decide what you call the trial evaluation team, at least about, you know, 50% of them will be from the School of Artillery, which he rightly said, you know, is a place where we just don't even for even a millimeter of, why a millimeter, even a nanometer of, let us say, inaccuracy. We just don't tolerate it. And I think that's the reason for our success. So till this pinaka of 60 kilometer lands up with the user, now when will it land up? The last successful trial was say about say around say September or October. 
or some may have be, be, be held this year. But what we are trying to get is a possibly another trial which will see things happening. I think what is needed is like we have done for in the case of the missiles, if we can get the user inducted early, maybe the rockets will come in early. Otherwise, we have got used to a time frame which in present day circumstances is unacceptable. A time frame which possibly extends from five to 10 years. So therefore, this pinakas, we need more regiments, we need them to come in. And they would be extremely useful because see what's happening is that when you fire guns, the impact is, shall I put it, around coming in, but it doesn't cause much shock action. When you fire rockets, and particularly in a salvo, the shock action is extremely important in warfare. It is that shock, you know, which today delivers the impact on land, which is normally in the first salvo that causes the difference. So if pinakas can come in, and if we can get a lighter version of the smirch, I think it will be extremely profitable for all of us in the Indian Army. Right, sir. And sir, uh, continuing, Bali, sir, uh, you know, when you had the trification of the artillery in the 90s, and you had the Army Air Defense and then the Army Aviation Corps coming up, uh, the SATA regiments, sir, did they remain or did they, uh, most of them go away to the Army Aviation Corps? and to the army defense. It was a, you know, that was something which I wanted to understand. Sangeeta, you asked me a very interesting question. I wear two hats. I've been with army aviation. And I yes, also sir. Been Absolutely. A, gunner, a diehard yes. gunner. Yes. Absolutely. Now, see the problem is air defense went this way. Army aviation went this way. SATA has remained with the artillery and SATA also had the UAVs. Unfortunately, yes, but... unfortunately, the UAVs have now been transferred to the Army Aviation Corps. Though I am an aviator, but I fail to understand when surveillance is the prime task of the Regiment of Artillery, they have surveillance centers and everything. And I'm just was in a, in a brigade when we did a major exercise in two corps where surveillance, UAVs giving you real-time information and who's going to interpret it? Now aviation will be flying the UAVs, information will be going somewhere else. And uh, I, I think uh, the top brass has made a hodgepodge of the whole thing. But the reality is the UAVs are no more with the artillery. They have now been transferred to the Army Aviation Corps and the process is on. This is the first. The second is Chakoti mentioned about the, you know, the BM-21 grad. I commanded the unit. And one of the batteries participated in Kargil 99, uh, 1999 operations and did a tremendous job despite the flat trajectory. Like he said, when a salvo used to be fired, 240 rounds from one battery, they were sh awe and shock. On the on the way the guys were sitting, even maybe on the maybe on the reverse slope, but the sound and the very effect of this was fantastic. I just want to tell I just one thing I missed out in this entire you know program, the plan is the mounted gun system. Now this mounted gun system has been you know stagnating. It is also it was also started. I was in service, very much in service. When we talked for the first time of the mounted gun system at part of our restructuring and modernization plan, it's a very good system. It has uh, been proved wherever it is there. That's why we opted for it and not for very num small numbers, 814 total pieces. Yes. Now that is stuck once again. I believe now again the thing it is being brought up and the army is going to issue a RFI very soon. There are a lot of players in this. There are Indian players. There are two major companies. There are foreigners like uh, foreign companies uh, which are there in it. But I think with this uh, negative list coming up in December, it will be left to the private companies like Bharat Forge, uh, Tata's and LNT, who have already displayed these. Uh, the OAP has also displayed, but it did yes. not uh, meet much success. 
but i think uh, a private industry is a success story and i'm sure they'll they'll live up and they might deliver where our oap and others may have failed so that's where we are today uh, on this issue right sir so chakravarti sir with your background of being deputy dg the perspective and planning division uh, what is uh, where do missiles come in you know to fill the gap well i think missiles are extremely important whenever you whether you are in boxing or whether you are in say today uh, undertaking any event your reach is most important missiles give you the reach missiles give you the flexibility and missiles allow you to create shock and all like sir spoke about the rockets which is really unthinkable we are very very lucky that we have the brahmos missile system within the indian army it's not with the strategic forces it's within the indian army and so far it's still within the indian artillery i think bali so give a very realistic picture of how things have been possibly you know uh, shall we put it moved as independent organization or linked up with other organization so far it's with the indian artillery and we have been able to optimize it let me put it today how do you like it today brahmos is firing 400 kilometers will be soon having a hypersonic missile 1500 kilometers i shouldn't be talking big but i remember i was in northern command and we had the oc western air command you know visiting us one of the issues i did was uh, there's a famous warden's doctrine and where you you know you apply concentric circles and you come on to what are the targets so with respect to our adversaries i did a live targeting believe me or not as far as the artillery is concerned as sir brought out you know our field guns the, the range which he brought out is close to 20 kilometers and the buffers go up to another 10 to 15 kilometers we did have a soltem gun which went up to about 38 kilometers but when it came to targets there were targets right up to the general headquarters of our adversary which we could easily get on there are targets in the tibet autonomous region which we need to target how do you target these you have railway lines coming in those railway lines oh, wonderful actually sir i think that is you given us real food for thought this is a topic for another big discussion one day where we just talk about how to target across the borders you know it will be lovely to have this See, i have It'll done be a really lot of nice. targeting believe me or not i know you can ask me about bali pass up both of the school and others yes As yes sir i was one of those people who wanted the school of artillery to fire across the railway line which they do often i'm sure they must be doing jal bali allowed us to do it right bali sir will take off from where we left you know the cda is very recently has spoken about the rocket force can you elaborate it uh, for our audience sir see he has just mentioned uh, you rightly said i also read that and i was wondering what does he actually mean by saying rocket force you know is it the chinese model but look at the colossal number of regiments rocket regiments that the chinese have we are very minuscule and like uh, chakravarti brought out the pinaka additional six regiments sanctioned we got four with extended range ammunition are still in trial stage we have got three smirch regiments and we have got um, bm uh, grad bm 21 which are very old technology though a lot of upgrade has been done but the ranges are limited When you say rocket force, the rocket force must have sixty kilometers and beyond range. That's the only way the rocket force is going to have some effect on strategic targets. I want to engage strategic targets when I want to make a rocket force. I do not know whether some missiles will be part of this rocket force. In in the Chinese model, even the missiles are part of this rocket force. So uh, it it is I think very premature. He has made a statement of a rocket force. I, i i only hope that the artillery next does not lose the, <laughs> the rockets themselves uh, if you going to have a separate rocket force uh, that is one uh, that is one which i feel on the cds statement uh, two more things i just want to add you know ammunition is the biggest bug bear we not spoken without ammunition no guns can fire i can get the best of guns but if i don't have ammunition 
they are show pieces. I can just put them on the and show to the enemy here are my guns. In Kargil, we had to do emergency purchase. We had to run around. And now also, when the Eastern Ladakh situation took place, again, we were running around to get ammunition. That is the biggest bugbear. If, if Atam Nirbhar is required anywhere, it is required in the manufacture of ammunition. And that is one area. You know, it's all very good. We are exporting the PGMs. Like we already have Krasnopol, and now we are getting these Excalibur ammunition from uh, uh, US. We already got 1,500 rounds in uh, 2019. But yes, sir. that is very good. It, it, it is a good thing. We have to have PGMs. But what are the conventional ammunition availability? When you can't even fight a short, sustained war with what you have got. So they've opened up the private sector, and I'm waiting to see how will they move forward. And one good development that has taken place, which Chakravati can comment more on, is we have developed the weapon locating radar called Swati. Now, that's yes. a very good development. It, it uh, As per my knowledge, it competes with the WLR, which you have already got, the American yes. one. And I think that's a big achievement. So I'll stop here. Uh, right, sir. Chakravarti, sir, we'll carry on from where uh, Palisa has left. Sir. We'd like you to elaborate on the Swati. We'd also like you to, you know, add on to whatever you feel about the rocket force. Uh, I think, uh, see, uh, Bali, sir, is very kind. After he's commanded a regiment of rockets. Well, I've dealt at it at a higher level and dealt even gone to Russia and been with Brahmos and rather instrumental in making into the Indian army. They're doing a lot of legging. It doesn't mean that what you call Bali, sir, no, they, they, buy, they use their brains. Let me put it today. A rocket force is something which you can't do without. I mean, say, you know, when you look at Today's area where today everything has to be done in a very short time, mainly because nuclear weapons have come in, even the biological warfare, the development is very fast. The artillery has to do things fast. And so I would agree that if we have to do everything now in salvos, there are things that have to cause shock. People have to be shocked. Like say you today, when you saw the COVID, you found a shock wave going on everywhere, as if death was dancing around everybody. Oxygen cylinders and what sir is talking about ammunition and oxygen is something like oxygen cylinders. The ammunition is our oxygen for our guns or our colors. Well, I would like to talk about the rocket force and definitely this would combine the missiles. As a matter of fact, when you ask me the question, I agree with Bali, sir. It cannot be just purely just the smirches and the BM-21s and the pinakas, which are till today, even if we decide to get additional regiments, from Belarus or Russia or from anywhere, it will take a long time. We have to combine the missiles. Brahmos is a very good option. And plus, if we get the hypersonic version, I think it would be fantastic. Hypersonic means you're going to hit 1,500 kilometers. And just look at it. I would say you need not use all these surgical strikes. Malisa has been writing about it. I've been writing. You use artillery with PGMs, I think, and you use the rocket force. Let me see who on earth thereafter dares to really cross the line of control. It is that effective. Having been at the line of control, having been at the line of actual control, these are weapons which are effective. The next you asked is about the weapon locating radar, Swati. Uh, let me put it to you. We having been very deeply involved with it. Uh, See, trials are very, very taxing, and we just don't give in to anything which goes wrong. So when uh, the trial radar is passed through, at least it is suitable for, shall we put it, the deserts, the plains. But really, I, for one, feel, you know, you may say anything, it's your hills and mountains. Balisa has commanded 25 RT Brigade. He knows how, how, how important it is Ultimately, and he spoke also of Cargill and the reverse slope. That is something on the forward slope must have impact even the reverse slope. That is the level at which we, our minds are thinking. So the Swati has to be today. We have to get after it. Now, do, how do you get after it? Now, you know, you may say you leave it entirely to Bharat Electronic. Things don't happen that way. The user has to get involved. What at least personally I did. I made sure that the NTP-237, when it came from the United States, was placed in Cargill. It was over there. 
we received an accuracy which was possibly double that of what we were expected. But we still kept it there. We kept on improving every day it was there. It is like today when you put a person into that mountains, because the bell scientists and all, they got to get used to the mountains. Or we get a private sector again involved. But in this, the private sector coming in is a little different because radars and all, some of the private sector has not been at all involved. So if you get them involved, I'm sure Swati will be effective in the mountains and gradually it will move up to high altitude. I would put Kargil to be at the low high altitude. Now I would say Kargil is about eight to 9,000 feet. But today, if you can go up to Kargil itself, it's a great achievement. And Swati must go in there. It's for us to take the radar there. The company will always say we are happy with the orders and they are now looking for foreign orders. This is where I would like to leave this question right now. Right, sir. So now my last question uh, to both of you. And uh, we'll begin, sir, uh, Chakravarti, sir, with you, asking you to continue by telling us, is ease of business a hindrance in RT modernization? Well, uh, as far as business is concerned with RT organizations, I would like to say, as far as the nodal point for artillery you know, improvements is concerned, I'm talking of interaction with the business, is the artillery directorate or the directorate general of artillery. Balisa would agree, and obviously we have been influenced. At least for the past, shall I put it, or one would put it about from 2008 or so till today, that's about 13 years. I think the artillery has been doing business with a lot of ease, a lot of comfort. I'll give you a small example, and the best example is the K9 Thunder. I think Samsung Tech Queen, they keep changing their names also, Ho Ho or something or something. All right, they were always trying to say that we will only fire for trials with our ammunition. We will not fire with Indian ammunition. Can you beat it? The artillery got a GSQR with the assistance of the general staff. The artillery itself, the directed from the part of the general staff, if I may put it, but with the help of the deputy chief and who was very understanding. And we made sure that we said, once it comes to the you know, single stage, that is at the L1 stage or something, we will fire Indian ammunition. It was agreed. To get that, such a big thing into the, shall I put it, format, speaks how much the artillery is flexible. Artillery was so flexible, we initially tried to get Cernos, Israeli I mean, missile in place of Brahmos, the Lora. It didn't succeed. So it didn't succeed, we got Brahmos. And Brahmos means adapting a naval system to the artillery systems. Not only that, look at the flexibility of doing business in it. Brahmos has got many other private companies, 260 private companies who work with DRDO. So if today, if you feel that Brahmos is successful, you have to have LNT, you've got Godrej, you've got everybody in it. So therefore, the steep dive, which is the main thing, again, when it comes to the mountain, Brahmos was quite happy. Everybody is happy that, okay, so long as it's acceptable in planes, bulk of the Indian Army orders. But when it comes to battle, today Brahmos is a battle-proven missile because it has got a steep dive capability. So artillery looked at this business issue, compelled them to do it, and did. And lastly, let me put it today. We have the field artillery tractor today. I mean to say this has led to a huge development. Tatas are today replaced what you call, uh, what is this, uh, Bemil, that's, which is the original company, Tatra, okay? And bulk of the Indian and artillery was in Mr. Narona. I still remember always saying, sir, can I take five minutes? He may have come to the neighboring directory. He'll come and thereafter, God knows how many hours he'll spend. So we have been very open to business in a transparent mode. Everybody, including a retired person, could walk in and ask me what is happening. We did it. And everything is out in the open. There's nothing which is happening which doesn't, which either makes the businessman feel uneasy, which makes the retired officer feel happy or unhappy, or the serving officer. So I think business is going on beautifully. But yes, the Ordnance Factory Board and others, which Sir pointed out, I think I'll leave it for him to best elaborate on these issues. 
Palli sir, the senior gets the first word and also gets the last word. So Thank we'd you. like to understand from you, what are the roadblocks uh, there in the process of RT modernization and what are the solutions? Uh, let me just put it uh, forward very bluntly. There are two issues which are, you know, which are dithering and which are causing this uh, slowing down of the modernization process. One is the technical glitches themselves. You know, we got to accept. The problem is when you say that DRDO says ATAX is one of the most modern and the best guns and therefore ethos should not come in. The arguments, you know, why, why are they for two years, the ethos is stuck because this is the argument. Second argument is Atam Nirbhar. Very good. I am for all for Atam Nirbhar. But you can't get technology overnight. You cannot have a system. 18.66 tons is the weight of the attacks. All other guns of the same caliber, same this thing, are in the range of 14 to 15 tons. How do you explain that? I mean, you want me to accept a gun which is almost 19 tons against what is available everywhere all around the world, the best guns which are already tried and tested, 14 and 50, uh, between 14 and 15 tons. So these technical, like I've talked only attacks. Other things are minor, but this is a major issue. And there are a lot of people who have suggested involve the private, uh, their private sector involved already. But involve more people. Find out what is the solution. How can you reduce the weight without reducing the effectiveness, uh, effectiveness of the gun? This is one major stumbling block in the attacks project. As far as Dhanush is concerned, he said about the OFB. Now the OFB, you know how many guns they have produced? We signed in 2018 for 114, Indian for 114 guns. Only 12 guns have been handed over to the Indian Army. 12 guns. Why? Because the, you know, they are citing COVID. They are citing other reasons. I mean, this, uh, you know, uh, slow process of manufacture at this rate, we'll go to another five to six years before I can have the 114 Dhanush guns uh, serviceable in the Indian Army. Therefore, OFB has to involve private sector. That is a roadblock and the way forward. The private sector has to be involved along with OFB to move forward. That's another glitch. The third one, the major roadblock, is our acquisition process and the eval trial evaluation process. Every process, every trial evaluation takes five to six years. I, I don't see, I mean, I was an ADG Army Evasion. I did a trial of helicopters, finished the entire thing in one year. It is a different story that the government thereafter, you know, that, that process, someone writing against the other, other writing against the other, and that process started. But a trial evaluation, trials, if the equipment is okay, should not take more than two to three years. This five to six years, now add another two years, lingering on to eight years. I mean, it sets in the pretty, this is our process itself is the biggest roadblock which needs to be uh, corrected. We have been talking of it, a lot of articles have been written, but I don't see any improvement. We go back to uh, stage one every time. So Dhanush has got major issues. It has got a barrel problem. And lastly, a roadblock is quality control. Why should so many barrels burst? And telling me because we have fired so many rounds so barrel burst is a normal, uh, you know, normal happening. Yes, it does happen, but it can't happen at a frequency that is happening with the Danush gun. This is a fourth barrel burst in February this year and is not acceptable. And therefore, I think uh, these technical issues need to be addressed. A special committee needs to be formed, which will address all this and also monitor and move forward. This is what, if, if we don't address all this, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, this... Artillery modernization is going to stumble and may not move forward at the pace that we were all expecting till last year. Thank you. So, uh, since you got up the point of OFB, my last uh, you know, request to you is to just tell me one thing. I mean, your expectation that there is going to be a corporatization of uh, OFB and you will have OFB split into seven different companies. 
Now, will that help RT modernization? Certainly, it will help because it's too much of a monolith organization, uh, which is that's a, uh, that's why results are not coming. Efficiency is less. Moment you have this corporatization, the efficiency will uh, increase. Secondly, you have to take the responsibility. No one takes the responsibility. I mean, it is uh, everything is allowed to carry on a chalta hai attitude. Uh, that is not acceptable anymore. And I think it will help. Right, sir. Thank you very much, General B.S. Pawar. And thank you very much, General Chakravarti. It was wonderful to have you on our show. And we would really like to carry on this conversation. Like I said, you know, that uh, the time is less and the you know, subject is vast. So we hope to meet again. And before we pack off, we'd like to wish you both a very happy Gunners Day. And we just hope, you know, that Indian RT remains like it is second to none. Thank you very much, sir, for being on the show with us. Thank you, Sangeeta. It's been a pleasure being on your uh, channel. Thanks, Sita. Right. Oh, thank, thank you, you Sangeeta. And thank you, Chakali. Right. Thank you very much. It was thank a you, Chakali, sir. She is thank managing you, from Cyprus. Thank well, you, have a wonderful evening. It was very informative. And yes, definitely it was technical. But for me, it was really informative. Thank you so much, gentlemen. It was great hearing you both. On behalf of ADU, I thank all three of you for giving your precious time for this discussion. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jatali.